a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very profound. Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I'm your host, Brandon Thomas. This week, we have Mark Gant on the show. He is an actor, a writer, a director, an egoless husband, and a humble father. Uh, 20, his 2010 uh, Bannon Way trailer will be linked in the show notes. You guys, check this thing out. He wrote, directed, acted, everything in it. Uh, it's a really cool thing with a great cast. Uh, on this episode, guys, we covered a lot of really cool topics as far as his career in Hollywood, uh, as far as what he does, and also we uh, have some fun with it. Uh, I introduced him to the Mandela effect and it's a lot of fun so you guys check this episode out I uh, amazing dude one of my favorite people I've ever talked to in my life Mark Gant thank you guys so much for listening today we have the great Mark Gant here with us Mark how are you today buddy I'm fantastic I'm excited to be here yeah right uh, writer director actor uh, egoless uh, husband and uh, you know amazing humble father here so <laughs> You check a lot of boxes, man, and I've been looking forward to speaking with you. You've got an amazing career. Uh, if you don't mind, just tell my audience just a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I started in the in the film industry, you know, from from the ground up. I started as a as a PA to a, a, a driver to the art department, and then uh, worked my way up into uh, being a prop master on you know. $75 million movies and then decided, you know, I really want to be an actor. That's, that's really why I came here. And so I transitioned out of that and started taking some acting classes and started acting. And, and while I was doing that, I was like, God, I really like directing. And so I started directing some shorts and then I started writing. And so then I sort of transitioned out of all those into, you know, becoming a writer director. And at one point created my own show for Crackle called Abandoned Way um, that I wrote, co-wrote, uh, created, produced, starred in. And, um, and it was just a, it was a great experience for me to learn that I can, you know, uh, I can create my own, you know, my own sort of version of, of uh, my life, you know, and not have to be waiting for somebody else to, you know, to cast me, to, to tell me what I can do. And so. It's perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. And I like the many hats element of it because you did ground up it, uh, which now, you know, you know, it just makes you more versatile. It makes you more apt to do any job. And then you can layer your experiences and your understanding from those different perspectives that you had in the industry. And I think it's awesome. So I do want to talk to you about uh, the Bannon Way because that is such a cool cool deal. I mean, the cast alone is incredible. Thank so you. the story is great. You're oh. the lead, of course, and it's very well acted in, very well directed, very well written. Uh, I even like the, the murder assassin uh, chick trio, you know, which your wife plays uh -huh. one of. Uh -huh. Yeah. And yes. uh, so you've got a killer cast in this thing. So it was made in 2010. And actually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and link the trailer in the show notes, the YouTube oh, trailer. So people can just click directly on that and they can kind of see what it's all about. But your co-stars there, uh, Vanessa Marcel, uh, she, of course, was the love interest in The Rock. She was mm -hmm. um, Nicolas Cage's girlfriend. Uh, Gabriel Tigerman, which not only incredibly talented, dope ass last name. So I get yeah. why you got him. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, your wife, Brian Davis. Uh, and then um, Michael Ironside, man. that He is like on my bucket list to talk to. Such a cool actor. He has been in some of the most fun films. Of course, Total Recall, uh, Starship Trooper. I mean, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, Top Gun. And then also he was in Synchronicity with your wife as well. And I, yes. I, I like how it all wraps around uh, together. So uh, tell me about that and how that came about. Well, uh, the, the project itself uh, started with... Um a frustration with my with my acting career. I was doing really great stuff in class. I felt my teachers felt that I was doing really great work, but I was not getting the sort of the opportunities in the real world. And so I sort of, you know, was hitting a wall with that. And, um, you know, I was in a class and, you know, my teacher, I've told this, told the story, but my, te my teacher at the time was giving a critique to my scene partner. And he was basically telling her, um, that her famous sister, you know, was not as talented as her, but, you know, she had to build her own door and walk 
into it. Like she had to create her own career. Like she mm-hmm. couldn't try to duplicate what, what her sister had done and, um, or expect that, that it's supposed to go that way. And so I came home and just something hit me and, uh, and Brianne, who, you know, was my girlfriend at the time, um, was there and I came in and I just, and I wrote today, I quit fighting. And it just felt like I was always trying to like make it happen, you know, wanting somebody to cast me, wanting somebody to do this. And I realized like, I know how to make movies. You know, I started, I know how to do production. I know how to write and how I was doing, this is what I was saying. I was sort of starting to direct. And, and so I wrote down a, um, a list of three people that were writer directors that I knew wanted to work with me instead of people that I was trying to go after that didn't know who I was. Yeah. And one of them was this guy, Jesse Warren, who was in class and he had written a script uh, the year before that he handed me and said, you're perfect for this part. Like you're the guy. And, um, and it was a little too similar to another movie that was already out, but I love the character. And so I came to him and said, Hey, what if we do something different? What if we make a short film out of this and we rewrite it and we sort of create something out of this. And, you know, long story short, we, we sort of decided it could be a web series. And then out of the web series, like, wait, what's a web series and how long do they have to be? And we're like, we don't really know, but a friend um, went to Sundance and sold a movie. We're like, well, what if we did like a feature length that's also cut up as a web series and then we can sell it as a full feature. And then we have a DVD sales and, you know, that way. And um, cut to, you know, a year and a half later, writing every day, creating, you know, the first two episodes, a trailer, and we pitch it to all these places around town from Fox to NBC to um, uh, Universal and end up selling it to Sony and Crackle. And so we came in there as me as the lead. He was the director. That would, they love that. And we had some other cats. We had Stana Kotick, who was in the castle. She was actually playing Vanessa Marcel's part originally oh, okay. in the first two episodes. But she was doing the castle that just got picked up. And we had some other people that were smaller parts um, and Gabriel Tigerman was one of them. And they said, well, we really need, they said, we are fine. Whoever you guys want, we love it. And then literally about a month before we're about to shoot, they said, we actually need some names for Walmart, Mm -hmm. like Walmart. And they're like, yeah, so we could sell it on the shelves of Walmart. We need some recognizable names, but you guys don't have any extra money to do it. So just, you know, but we need to find it. So we had a casting director that was with Sony and they were sort of doing their thing. And we guess just kept getting all these, you know, no's as a web series. We didn't really have the money obviously. And then, you know, my producing uh, partner, Bailey Williams was like, you know, let's just go ask our friends. We got to know somebody that knows somebody. Absolutely. And so that's what we did. And he, cause he had said, you know, my mom used to date Robert Forrester. And I was like, cause he's on our list. And he's like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I could text him. I'm like, you can text Robert Forrester. Yeah. yeah. And he said, yeah, let me text him. Mm. So he texted Robert Forrester and uh, said, can I send you this stuff? These guys are great. And so sent him the stuff and he said, yeah, let's meet, you know, let's meet for, uh, for lunch. And uh, we met at his place over uh, at this restaurant that he was there every day, the same restaurant that um, uh, Quentin Tarantino walked in and gave him the script for, you know, his, like what he talks about, like changed his life, you yeah, know, Jackie Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie Brown. And, um, and so we met with him there and he was just like, he was, yes, from the beginning, he's like, I love what you guys did. You guys are smart. You guys are, you know, really, really like this. And so we got him. And then I had another friend of mine who was my agent at the, was our agent. Um, and he said, you know, what do you guys need? What about like somebody like my, Michael Ironside to play your uncle? I was like, yeah, that's exactly what we need. He's like, well, I actually know him. So I could actually send him a note and see if he would be willing to talk to you guys. Same thing, you know, same friend of a friend kind of thing. Send him the stuff that we had done. And then we again met him for, for a lunch and uh, he was just great. He's like, just, just so you guys know, you know, people usually hire me to uh, sort of watch the director on projects like this because you guys usually don't know what you're doing. And then the actors, you know, haven't really done this before. So I'm here, we're like, we're both so intimidated thinking, oh, if we say yes, he's going to just take over the whole thing or whatever. And he's like, nah, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And, um, <laughs> That's good. and he was great. And they were just, you know, they couldn't have been the sweetest, more sweet. They were just like the nicest guys ever. And, uh, and Vanessa came through um, a friend of the casting director, actually. And, um, and she said yes immediately. And she was fantastic. She was from the day, from day one, she was, she was gung ho. She was on board to do it. And, uh, and everybody was, it was just a, it was just a, it was one of those ones where I was like walking down, you know, in this corridor of this, uh, 
this um, huge uh, warehouse where you're shooting and there's like a, an electrician up on things. He's like, Hey Mark, how's it going, man? Good shoot so far. And I was like, this is like an idea in my head yeah. into two and a half years later and I'm on set and there's like 70 people manifesting my vision right here, you know? And it was such a powerful moment. I was like, Oh, right. Cause I was so caught up in it. Like, just like, you know, you're just trying to do everything, but there was that moment. I was like, Oh yeah, that was just started as an idea of like, I'm, you know, I'm tired of fighting to I'm driving a brand new Jag with this like expensive suit on, you know, with these guys that I like, you know, some of my, you know, some heroes in terms of actors. So yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. And it's, it's such a cool project, man. It's so well shot. It's real. Um, I, I got even just off of the trailer, man, you get like this real lock stock kind of idea about mm -hmm. it, but it's, it's a fun thing and it's very well casted, very well written. Like I said, it's, it's awesome. So again, I'll link that in the show notes. You guys go check that out for sure. I, I wanted to ask you about something that you were talking about, about manifesting your reality in a whole. Are, are you a subscriber to that idea? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not even the whole woo-woo element of it. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, like Rhonda Burns, The Secret. You know, everybody took that and was like, why don't I have a Jaguar right now? Uh, I wanted one. I wrote it down in this book and I didn't put any work towards it. I didn't do anything. Um, right. But but you took the steps. And so when when things start aligning like that, that's really when you not only take control of your life, but you start you stop fighting the flow of the river. You point your feet down and you let it go because you've that is your river and you realize that you right. are creating your reality so what did that feel like when was your first moment to where you were like i can actually do this because then it's a domino effect after that yeah you know it's an interesting thing because yes that you know there's the you know you make the decision and the, the whole world conspires you know in your favor and you know, the only sort of, you know, sometimes the, the stumbling block is yourself because, yes. you know, this is all sort of the, the, the energy of everything is moving, Yep. you know, and if you're the rock stopped as the, as the, everything is just passing you by because of whatever fear, re, um, resistance, you know, all those things that can come up. So, you know, I think that the biggest thing was showing up every day and going past the sort of going past that sort of stuck place where let's say like Jesse and I disagreed on a certain thing, you know, early on. And it was like, okay, where's, is, is this where those, you know, we just go, eh, we're not going to work together because he thinks it's this way. I think it's this way. And we both said, okay, I'll compromise, I'll compromise. And, and we move forward and we got to this next thing. And, and something started happening when, um, we started to, to get things together and we felt really good about it. Yeah. And we felt like we have something special. We've got like sort of this lightning in a bottle. And then we started pitching it to some people in town. And this is before we shot anything. And we got that. Oh, this is really great. If you guys were like bigger names, it'd be great if you guys had some more money because no one's really paying for this kind of stuff. Mm. And so that at that moment, we were, you know, up to that point, one of us was always like more optimistic, you yeah. know, at, at some point in the journey. And at that point, we we're both like, wow, we're like, I guess we're not gonna be able to make it. Yeah. And, um, and something I just I had a dream that I saw us making it. And I woke up the next morning, I texted him, I said, let's just shoot it ourselves. Like, let's shoot like a trailer, the first two episodes or the episode and just so we have something to show these people and go, this is what we can do. Yeah. And we were already doing some sort of camera tests and stuff, but it wasn't, you know, I mean, then we we're like, ah, oh, this is it. It's just, you know, if we had a better camera, we had a thing. And, and so, and we did that. And we, we like a month and a half later, uh, Valentine's weekend, we shot this thing for two days. We got all these favors. I, you know, called up Jag. I got a Jag for free. They dropped it off for the, for the weekend, you know, <laughs> brand new XF had never been, it's not even out in the U S at that point. And um, we had these amazing locations and got this hotel for free because, you know, we said we were student film and like all this stuff was just like, that's where it was like, it just started about, Oh, it's all like falling into place. And we had put together this website so that we were able to send people to the website to say, Hey, this is what we're thinking. So we had at the time BMW had these short films. I don't know if you ever saw them, but mm -hmm. it was like directed by, you know, like Wong Kar Wai to, you know, the RSA guys and, you know, to Tony Scott and, we saw those and we're like, yeah, 
I'm like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm him. I'm the, so, so our site was full of, you know, all these like name actors, the, the trailer for, you know, the BMW films and said, this is the show that we're trying to make. And we bought into it, you know, yeah. we, we believed it. And then, so everybody else believed into it. And I remember even the first day the DP um, and I were talking and he was saying on the, on the first day of shooting, and I was looking at the, you know, some playback, like, Oh my God, it looks amazing. And he said, yeah, but you guys created it. Like you guys had the vision. It's like, yeah, I'm just putting this, you know, you guys got the, you know, you even got the props, you got this, you got all these favors and all this stuff. And it's like, that's where it's sort of like this magic started to happen. And so, when we were able to to do that and and then you know wanting it to be done within two months and it took nine months to get finished those two episodes had we finished in the two months and this is where this is where to me it gets a little woohoo because we wanted it done in two months we wanted it done by april 30th or something and just didn't happen the editor wasn't great we had to find a new editor we had to do this we had to you know so nine months later we're finished with it and when we're going to my friend who's an agent at this big agency who got us the Michael Ironside, uh, he was like, you know, I'm on my way to Sony. They're looking for something just like this. Now, seven months ago, they weren't looking for that. Exactly. You know? And yes. so that's what, that was another sort of click for us. We're like, oh yeah, like you got to trust. You got to just keep, you got to keep showing up. Cause we could have stopped, you know, when it wasn't working, we could have said, this is not, you know, it's just not going to, you know, whatever, or, or force it or try to, you know, try to get it out there anyway, even though it wasn't perfect. And it was never going to be perfect. It was never perfect. And it will never be perfect, but you know, to the best that it could be. And so I think that was, those are those two moments for us where it was like, we could, we had our own control of it by just doing it. And then when we were out of control, like we can, we had, we we're so powerless of the whole process. It just sort of started taking off itself. And, and that's where it just sort of, you know, I mean, within that, again, within that though, is always just, you know, it's not just like a, you know, like life, it's not just like a shh kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, it was, there was the, yes, they agreed and the lawyers and a thing and biz affairs. And, oh, there's a financial crisis and everybody's like freezing up. Nobody's got any money. Okay. Let's wait till next year. Da, 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 you know, all these little things. And yet there was still like sort of this flow that was like above all of that, that was like, yes, that's what we're supposed to do. See, this is all working together. Wow, this feels really good kind of thing. It's amazing. And and the way you put it is perfect because it is part of the story. You've got to have that dichotomy. You have to have the things that work out unbelievably well and the things that just kind of seem to be a little bit of a roadblock for you to right. tell the, the universe. That's, in my opinion, the <sighs> universe's way of saying, OK, are you sure you want this? Because if it is. We can keep going, but you need to show me that it's worth right. it to you. Right. I, and to your perfection element of it, I think it's great. It's wonderful. But have you ever heard the thing in art that there's no finished works of art? There are only abandoned works of art. Uh, as a musician, I yeah. can tell you, no songs are ever done, right? You just kind right. of go, okay, that's good. I like that. And then you move on with it. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, because you have been in some more of the esoteric films, uh, you've done some more directing, writing and acting for some more esoteric type of things, which makes me think that you are uh, either, either it just worked out that you got those deals and so you wanted them because you believed in the project and the people involved, or is there an undercurrent that you're kind of interested in things like the paranormal and things like... Uh, extraterrestrials, things like um, the ancient, like the movie Faux, uh, with the archaeology uh, guy that did the Babylonian trends. Right. That that kind of stuff is so cool. And then of course, uh, Night Visitor and Night Visitor Two. I mean, these kind of had these elemental or these paranormal type elements to it. Is that something that's of interest to you? You know, not entirely. It's not something that you know. It's not. It's not something that I'm like I lean into. But it was one of those things that. Um, again on a some sort of you know other level of like oh i'm sort of pulled drawn into these to these sort of projects like this and it's not that i had sort of led with that um it just sort of happened that way and and, and all those projects were were these really like and you know how did i get that yeah. how did this happen this just happened like this and you know in a weird way a couple of them were three of them were all to get tied together from like one person sort of led to these other three things, which was really weird. Yeah. So interesting. Okay. I so was yeah, just... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have anything in, 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 I've never been that the guy that's been that, um, interested in it, um, to the fact that I would want to do something like that. It just seemed to be sort of drawn 
in some weird way to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just fun, you know, to take yourself yeah. out of your day to day to do stuff like that. I mean, oh, it's yeah, just yeah, cool. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure you hung out with some people that were big believers in that. Did they give mm. you any crazy stories or anything like that about? Maybe- well, yeah. 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 On, on Night Visitor too, we had Chip Coffee, who is the, you know, sort of like, you know, uh, the, the, the guy that's like the paranormal, you know, the real deal. Like, and we, you know, to listen to him talk about, even when we were, we were doing it, um, he was talking about, oh, you know, as we're doing this one scene, he's like, oh, well, there's, there's, you know, this happened to me once when, you know, we walked into this house and he's like telling us about how this, this, the spirit was there, even though it was supposed to next door and so they had like come by to like they're setting up you know all the cameras and stuff in this one other house even though it was supposed to be in the main house in, in this house next door and um as everybody was setting up it was like the spirit that was supposed to be next door showed up at that house and you know and they were just kind of getting everything ready and everything was falling apart like the thing the wires kept getting unplugged and the stuff and they but so by the time they got to that house to shoot something nothing nothing was there but it was all at the other house <laughs> it was next door so, yeah, it was yeah. next door and so you know um we were doing this thing here and he was just saying you know hopefully this hopefully he's going to show up you know because we were all getting ready to act he's like hopefully this shows up because he might be next door you know yeah it's in the bat yeah. signal out or just somebody yeah, run exactly. over and get him he's at the wrong house we gave him the wrong address yeah um the wrong call time wrong wrong address right right uh well i um i had some so let me ask you this who is your who's your favorite person that you've ever worked with and who's somebody that you would love to work with if um you know money time options were no boundaries somebody alive oh gosh i know i like Um, to put you on the spot yeah yeah yeah. so the person that the best experience i've had uh working there's so many there's so many really great people but um George Clooney was one of, has been one of my, you know, uh, favorite stories. Um, cause he's just, he's one of those guys that, um, you know, besides being, you know, ridiculously handsome and charming and talented and, yeah. you know, um, he is, he's such a caring and thoughtful person and thinks much he's, it's always to me, it's always, I always feel like it's outside of him. Like he's sort of had these gifts. Great. But like, what can he do with them? And it's always been about, you know, how can he make a difference in the world? And, and I've always, I've always appreciated that about him. And when I got a chance to work with him, I was a bartender in, in small, small scene in Ocean's Eleven with Brad Pitt. And he was the, the day that we were shooting was like, they're shooting the back poker room and George and, and Brad are in that scene. And so there's a scene where George walks past him behind in my scene. So they were both there and just watching him walk up on the first day, um, on, on, on my day, on the first day of when I was there, he'd walked on set and he just knew everybody's name. Like he said to the grip, Hey Bob, how's it going today? How's your kids? Do you have a good weekend? Great, 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 great. Hey, how's it? And he's like, he knew, everybody's name he knew what they were doing he knew their life um he introduced himself to me right away when we there was like the lakers final uh, finals and they were on the tailgate and he like got me up there just so i could look over the crew to like watch the thing and it was just brad pitt and me and george clooney on hollywood boulevard and i was just like i mean come on i just like i've i've, I've arrived and um <laughs> but it was just there was i've always felt like um you know he's somebody that is trying to make it this place better. And I, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of like who I would want to work with or, you know, do a project with, you know, um, I've always, I've always felt like, you know, JJ Abrams is somebody that, you know, is like, he's, he's always feeling like he's, he's wanting to tell these in a sense, these other, these sort of otherworldly stories, you know, like, you know, sort of making that. So, so maybe I am drawn to that and I don't even know it. You You might be, he did a great job with the new Star Trek. Uh, Yeah. Those are awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, But again, he's somebody that, you know, wants to tell interesting stories and it doesn't feel like it's always about him or this ego, you know, it's just about, you know, entertaining and stuff. So. Yeah, it's about you put me on the spot. Story. I said J.J. Abrams. I mean, I could have thought about somebody else, but you know. I, it, what it does, I think, is it forces your your uh, supra conscious, the one you know that's above, yeah. to kind of answer more honestly than you have time to think about. And that's why yeah. I kind of like those kind of questions. I think you nailed it. I think that was a great answer. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what is uh, a talent that you wish that you had? Oh. <laughs> um.
there's so many that I wish that I had. Um, this was my wife's question, by the way. I asked her uh, if she wanted to ask something, and she I said, "I love that, that." Yeah, hers was um, um, memory. She wants a an, a perfect memory. Oof, that would be nice. So you can memorize um, everything. You wouldn't have to remember. Yeah. Just remember lines or anything like that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's funny that you say that because that's literally like I was just thinking what as an actor that was a thing that always it, it always it was like this this. Uh, sort of anxiety of that I would forget the lines. Cause when I was five years old in my first play, I forgot my line and oh. <laughs> I didn't know that I forgot my line. Like I had forgot the line and then it had went and it was like, I forgot my line. <laughs> I forgot to steal the watch. I forgot this whole thing. And so I've always been like, what if I'm going to forget the line? Um, but a talent, you know, um, I wish, you know what I wish, I wish that I could, understand money and business, you know, sort of that something that doesn't come naturally for me, you know? And so for me, it's always, you know, I feel like, um, I understand the creative part of stuff, but I never, you know, it was never somebody that I, you know, it was like, oh yeah, you build a business, you do this, you do that, you know, you, you, you know, do all these, you know, kind of thing. It's like, I feel like I'm, if I had that, it would be nice to be able to like, be more effective in the world that yeah. way, you know? Well, and retain your creativeness because a lot yeah, of those absolutely. people wish that they had your talents. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. It, it's kind of a trade-off. So you'd want to be able to balance the two hemispheres of the brain. Yes. That's a totally analytical, they they couldn't come up with anything, but man, they can, so you can hire somebody like that. That's even yeah, better yeah, and then I, retain well, that's your thing. talent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. I didn't know if I was going to get that that and have to lose something else. So I didn't know no. I thought you were giving, I thought you were giving me something extra. I thought not it was at all. a special this power. Is a, you know? abso- it is. And that would be the ultimate special power. Cause not only do you retain the, uh, the right half, the creative half, but then you can also just uh, like the beautiful mind math stuff going on yeah. you know, where you just get it. No, absolutely. It's an accentuation on your talents for, uh, yeah. for sure. Okay. Uh, so are you a big conspiracy guy or do you look into those at all? Not much. Not okay. much, no. I just had a question about if you had a favorite or one that you heard from some wacko at a party or something. You're like, that's the craziest damn thing I ever heard. I didn't know if you had just like a favorite or a craziest one. Um, yeah, not, not, not specific. I did, I did have the most shocking thing to know that a, a friend of mine who I had, you know, I knew when, um, when he first got sober and, you know, I've only known him since he's been sober and we, you know, somehow something came up and somebody was like, you know, uh, Johnny, I saw like a post of yours on Reddit from like, you know, 10 years ago. He's like, uh, huh," <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it was this whole thing about, you know, uh, nine 11 and who you thought did it and this whole thing. And he's like, yeah, I really went down this deep thing and I was, and I was on this, you know, this whole thing. And, and so that was my only sort of thing of like hearing somebody that I had, like, didn't know would, you know, he wouldn't seem to be somebody that was sort of had gone off the wild side, the, the, like the deep end on like a conspiracy theory, but he basically drove himself crazy thinking, you know, about 9-11 about, you know, who, who he thought was behind it. And, um, and that got him sober that was like taking him to that, almost to the mental institution about it. Yeah, you can, you could drive yourself nuts. So that I consider Are myself, you, well, do you, uh, pretty, yeah. So I consider myself more of a conspiracy analyst. So I like looking at it, but I don't, as an, uh, see, cause I don't watch sports. I don't, you know, that's what I choose to fill my time right. with is interesting books, fun thought experiments, things like that. Right. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a rabbit hole to go down though. Cause it actually, yeah. a lot of it applies to uh, TV and movies and logos and stuff like that. Right. Have you ever heard of the Mandela effect? No. Okay, so check this out. This is fun. I'll give you a couple of them. Um, so the Mandela effect in a nutshell is people remember things differently. And so the conspiracy theory element of it is, uh, it, it goes really, really deep, but we'll do this very watered down, is that something happened and we shifted into a parallel dimension, all of us, or most of us. Some of us, though, have memories from the old dimension, right? So this gets a little out there. So uh, let me give you one. So are you a Star Wars fan at all, or have you seen the movies? Yeah. Okay, okay. In the line, whenever Darth Vader is with Luke, does he say, does the line Line go, no, I am your father, or Luke, I am your father. Luke, I am your father. Never happened. Wow. I'm blowing your damn mind right now. Okay, this is the fun. Okay, uh, let me give you another one. Okay, Disney's, uh, what is it, Snow White. Does the witch say mirror, mirror on the wall, or magic mirror of the, on the wall? Oh, mirror, mirror. Never happened. This would be a fun thing for you to... <laughs> 
<laughs> this, this will be a fun Wait. thing for you to experience. So uh, basically, there are all kinds of people out there, tens of thousands, if not millions of people who remember things differently. And this is what's interesting about the conspiracy theory. They remember logos differently. Uh, peanut butter, was it Jiffy or Jif peanut butter? I want to say Jiffy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what most people say. See, you're from my timeline. I remember that as well, but it's not. It's Jif. It's never been Jiffy. I, I'll give you a couple more. Uh, so, um, Monopoly Man, describe him to me. Uh, top hat, tails, walking, sort of in a walking position kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like, With the know. money bag? Yeah. Did he have anything on his face that you can remember? There's like his little eye, one eye piece. The monocle? Thing. Monocle, yeah. Never no, had didn't it. Didn't have it. Isn't that crazy? Dude, uh, so these are the ones that are fun to me. It's not 9-11 and people dying, you know what I mean? This is, this, mm -hmm. These are the ones that I find interesting. Okay, uh, let's do uh, Curious George. Do you have a tail or no tail? The monkey. No tail. Uh, no tail is correct. Now, a lot of people, oh. well, in this timeline, right? It depends right, right. on how you view it. But isn't that a fun one? Yeah. <laughs> interesting. You got to check it out because there's a ton of them, man. A lot of them have to do with so movies. So when did this, when did this, this happen? When was this? Yeah. So there was, there was a psychic uh, or a lady that does psychic stuff. Uh, forget it. Something Brown or Mary Brown or Mary Bowman. I can't remember. But she um, came up with this theory in 2003 or 2009. She just wrote a post online. I remember Nelson Mandela dying in the 80s in prison and never living to become president. Uh, well, a lot of people came out and said, I remember that as well. I even remember my mom and dad crying about it on the TV whenever I was younger, seeing his funeral and all that. Never happened in this timeline, right? So it really, it, it's something in our lives that's interesting because it's not one or two people misremembering things. It's millions right. of people misremembering things. And that's why it's called the Mandela effect. It was this one lady that came up with it or that just kind of said, hey, I remember things differently. Um, another one, another popular one is, was it Bernstein Bears or Bernstein Bears? You remember that book with the little bears? Bernstein. Bernstein. Never had any. Isn't this crazy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not the direction I thought this interview would go, by the way. I just wanted to have some fun with it. I didn't know if you'd I, ever heard of it. And a no. lot of it has to do with movies, logos, things right. like that. It, it's a fun rabbit hole if you got some time, man. Just, you know, the internet. So just oh, have fun with I'm, it. I'm going to be obsessed with trying to figure this out. Yeah. They actually made a movie. It was a pretty low budget movie about it called The Mandela Effect. And it's pretty good. It's got all these in there, you know. Um, right. And it's got to do with this dude losing his damn mind, you know, about it. Uh, and it really affects his day to day. As long as you just have fun with it and you don't let it affect your day to day. Right. I think it'll be fine. But it's right, a fun right, right. little thought experiment to go down. So enjoy that. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Brianne's going to be like, why did you do that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Give you an easy one. Uh, Genie bottle washes up on shore. You got three wishes. Unlimited. I uh, can't wish for more wishes, of course. But other than that, go for it. Mm. I would love for the first one to be um, that we didn't see color or race as what it, you know, a difference in, a, in a, any sort of negative way as much as, you know, just, we're just all the same people. Yep. Um, second. That there was a pill like in hunger games that i could eat whatever i wanted take this pill throw up continue eating like it was to, like i had never had anything okay 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 which that's probably out there right now so that's maybe you know maybe the genie's already made it um yeah. and third i'd like to live forever i don't want to die i love really to live. yeah okay that's an interesting one I'm, I'm always curious by that one because everybody around you would die. All your loved ones. Now you get to form new connections and continue on. And that's, right. that's pretty cool. Is this out of a desire? Or is that of a, out of a fear of mortality? Never, or? No, I never thought of it till just now. Like literally just as it came up, I was like, oh, that would be interesting to like live forever. Like be able to, you know, li have morph into different lives, different people come in and, you know, whatever that would look like. Um, I mean, there's a part of me that feels like we do sort of we, you know, we do come back. And so, you know, whatever, you know, however many lifetimes I'm on on this one here, am I going to figure out what's this chunk that I'm figuring out now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I'm a Sagittarius. So, you know, it feels like I'm supposed to be close to the the start again, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) like the loop, but um, which I'm like panicking going, Jesus, I'm supposed to figure this shit out. What what happened? That's it. It's just a ride. You know, I mean, that's what I think at at its core, maybe we possibly do or an even better one. And one of my favorite things, uh, one of my favorite thought experiments would be, um, have you ever uh, read the book Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the concept that we're all God experiencing itself subjectively. So I'm you, you're me uh, in any dimension, in any reality. And God just wanted to experience itself subjectively. So it gave it, you know, this element of five sense world, you know, with dichotomy, with hot and, you know, hot and cold, dark and light and all that. That is what the ride is all about. And it's just experiential. So in a way, I think you're already, your wish number three is checked off the list. I just don't think it happens in this consciousness, you know, or or, or with a con, because I think you have to forget for the experience to be what it is. Right. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Awesome. I love those answers. I think those are fantastic. Uh, Okay. Uh, If you had the world's attention, everybody in the world, they could all understand you in any language that they listen to uh, for 30 seconds. What would you say? You don't have to fill up the whole 30 seconds. I was just curious about what your message would be. That's a good damn question, wasn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> wow. Um, everybody's looking at me. Waiting. Everybody, I'm and I'm not editing this. This is just going to be you hanging out and me sipping tea. Maybe just say that, you know, we aren't what our limiting beliefs are telling us to, that they are, that we are, Mm. and that we are more powerful and more important than we actually think we are. And we all have a gift inside of us. There's a, we all have Dharma. We all have this purpose that we have on this earth. And you're not going to hear it when the voices of the, of the past of the negative stuff is going on. You have to quiet those to hear it. I love it. So everybody be very quiet. Yeah. For the next 30 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) I'll yield the rest of my 25 seconds. Thank you. (laughs) That's perfect. To to just meditation and quietness. Uh, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) If you could disinvent one thing, tangible, an idea, any of that, if you could disinvent something, remove it from the world, like it never existed, what would it be? These questions. Oh my gosh, you're expanding my reality here. Um, (laughs) It was bound to happen. Wow. And I did not send these to him Some ahead bad. of time, guys. I like this uh, off the cuff. No, I wish you would have. I would have like, a great I job. <laughs> no, I, I would have come up with something stupid. I'm sure. I'm sure if I would have thought about it, I would have been like, um, just in fact, um, you could throw something my way if, if you, if you feel like uh, it's unfair, you know, I don't mind that. No, 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 no. Um, I think it's totally fair and unfair <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> okay. And I appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, Wow, I don't know. Yeah. What would that be? What would, do you have that? Not so. What would you what would you, what's what's something have you? So, here's the, here's the deal with this question oh, and this is why it's yeah. this is why it's hard. No, don't don't uh, it was a it was a kind of an answer but kind of a joke question. Now, if anything was uninvented, right? If you had the power to just erase it, okay? The implications of that are twofold. Number one, nobody would have realized that it was even here to begin with because it just wouldn't exist. Therefore, the memory of it wouldn't exist, right? right? It's not like a Mandela effect. Number two, if anything that you choose to take away, it, it could change anything in life, right? So let's say, and this is going to sound right. horrible, but just follow me on this. If the Nazis were never here, maybe the fact that they were here is the reason the world is not in much horrible shape, right? I think everything has a place, no matter how horrific, because mm-hmm. it teaches everybody lessons. It gives us the opportunity to all come together. But you may not have met your wife. You may not have had your beautiful son. You may not have been doing the things that you're doing if you could eliminate something, right? Because even the worst things, right. fear. I mean, even fear is something that motivates you to move forward. And so it's a tricky, it's a tricky question that I don't know how to answer. But I would say Nazis, though. So. 
I, I, I can appreciate that, appreciate that answer. And, and at the same time, the, uh, the first thing that you said, I think is absolutely spot on and, you know, without getting political, you know, I think the, you know, we've seen, you know, our country go through some, some major, you know, shifts yep. that, you know, that have happened. And I think if we hadn't had so much, you know, sort of darkness on one side and, you know, that there might have, you know, might not have come to light that yeah. we wouldn't be able to see this and be able to say, oh, oh, wow, look, we got some issues we need to take a look at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So without that, you know, we maybe not, you know, you don't get that sort of, you know, breakdown before the breakthrough kind of thing. So absolutely. And even the dichotomy is yeah. what's so interesting about it, because we do live in a world of, of dualism, right? It's a, yeah. it's a dualistic nature and you have to have one to know the other. But if a gun to my head, I'd say just hatred, man, just people that are yeah. shitty to each other, man. I think that's yeah. that's the biggest one right there. Um, OK, uh, let's do because I know we got to wrap it up here. Let's do one more. Um <laughs> Okay, I'll, I, I'll I don't like. I don't. No, no, I don't like. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I do not. I do not like that that little little giggle that you just did because you're just like, oh. Well, because I've got kind of a softball, and then I've got he kind can, of another can, one like the can, last one. He can barely do the other one. Wait till he gets this one. Jeez. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do a softball then. And I'll tell you the other one before we wrap it. You don't have to answer it. Okay. Okay. Dinner with three people alive or dead anytime in history. Uh, you, anybody, right. Uh, what would three people that you'd like to just sit down, have an evening meal with? Hemingway. Okay. Lady Diana. Okay. Let's go like, just go like, Marcus Aurelius. Let's just throw those three together. Yeah, why not? And language is no barrier, by the way. There'd be yeah. some sort yeah, of universal. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I like that answer. That's perfect. Do you want the question I was going to ask you? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> I'm afraid. To, I'm afraid to hear. What is what is one thing that you wish you could unsee? Oh. <laughs> I, I think I could answer that. What would be? As soon as you said that, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if you, I think you're younger than me, but um, growing up, there was uh, the VHS uh, um, band, you know, tapes that people got of Faces of Death. Yep. 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 And um, my friends and I were like, yeah, we got to get them. And I remember watching the first 10 minutes of one and going into the bathroom and throwing up and like just could not like it was just one of those things that's just like I, I don't remember which one of it was that we saw but i was like i don't want to see this like i did originally like i really thought it was like that we were all you know everybody and my friends were all into it and you know kept watching it but i could not and i can't i when i just i don't, I don't remember which one i saw at the moment but i just remember that feeling that yep. i wish i could never have seen like somebody die you know completely agree mine was yeah. actually that exact thing uh, and my buddies know don't send me stuff like that people getting their limbs broke or anything. I can't handle yeah. it. I, I don't, yeah. I can't stomach it. Uh, the other one was a buddy of mine found a, a nude picture of Ruth Bader Ginsburg that he sent me one time. And I just wish I could really unsee that. So no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> Mine is the f same thing. Anything gory or anything, uh, like the animals or anything like that. I can't. No, see I can't. I, that, I can't. There, there's a, uh, you know, uh, some Instagram, uh, guy that's like they do you know all the stupid stupid people kind of thing and it's like always them doing you know like doing some stunt or something and like you know falling and like it somehow i got on like it was it, i remember like i i somehow i liked it i mean i somehow followed them for something it was like one funny thing but then it was like this the next video that came up was a guy on a on a bike and just going over and just like slamming i was like uh, uh yeah uh. yeah i like, can't I do it to like undo yeah same. Yeah. And if I see somebody fall, rather I know it's going to happen or not, I cover the screen up. I'm like, nope, mm -hmm. I don't want to see nope. it. I just nope. I can't handle that stuff. So you and I are like that. Okay. I, yeah. I think that's a good quality. It shows that we're not like psychopaths, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Okay, exactly. Cool. I think so. We can check I think the we're, yeah, yeah, exactly. psychopath off the list. Okay, good. One. I got one thing. <laughs> going yeah. for you. You, know? <laughs> you got a lot of things going for you, man. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're at about the agreed upon time here, man. We've great. got to do this again. You're, you're a blast, Definitely. man. You're, you're Likewise. great. Likewise. Uh, so like I said, I will uh, link to you in the show notes. Uh, would you like me uh, tell the folks where they can find you? Um, 
Um, yeah, I'm all over the, you know, the big interwebs, uh, Mark Gant, uh, you know, at Mark Gant for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. Um, and my website's markgant.com or my director site's markgantdirector.com. Cool. Any uh, yeah. projects coming up? I know you're working on a TV show with your wife right now, but anything yeah. in the pipe that you're excited uh, about? I've got, a, I've got, a, yeah, I've got a couple um, Audible originals that I wrote and produced coming out um, about this uh called one of them is called Contra Costa about these seven serial killers that were all committing these crimes in Contra Costa at the exact same time, all, all found by one guy, Paul Holes, who is responsible for finding the Golden State Killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he started doing this investigation on this one um, missing girl. And he, they all thought for sure it was this one serial killer. So they did the DNA test, found out it wasn't him. It was this other serial killer. And then they found out, started following him, which led to this other girl. And they thought for sure it was him. And it was another serial killer. And it was like literally this hotbed of Contra Costa. And it was just like this time, this time when like, you know, the, the freeways were, you know, going all the way from North to South. There was like the, the, you know, um, a lot of, uh, hitchhiking because it was you know the 70s summer of love the yeah. 70s and stuff, yeah. 60s 70s and so all that stuff was like this hotbed for these these sick serial killers kind of thing and so interesting talk about like not wanting to see that kind of stuff you know yeah, sort of that stuff. <laughs> but there was something interesting about the investigation of that and then another one's called the injustice collector which is also coming out in june so those are two things that i'm really excited about uh, that are coming out this year absolutely that is so cool okay cool and there's a theory about that too that the uh leaded gasoline was one of the reasons people were losing their damn minds back then have you heard about that no, there's actually some like, some science to that. Yeah, where it's like that's why things were so crazy at that time, especially in high um, populated areas, uh, was because of all the. That's why unleaded gas became is because it was such an issue for people's minds. Man, it's right. crazy. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, why not? I'm learned something. I, I learned something. I, I, this is great. All the time, man. That's great. I thought, I, yeah, I thought this was going to be you know where you know you're going to want to learn something from me because i'm so interesting i learned no, a ton from you and you're incredibly just, interesting <laughs> yeah uh, and i'll give you another fun fact do you know why giraffes tongues are black no it's an evolutionary trait that they've developed over time because their food source is mainly in the tops of trees so to prevent it from getting sunburned it's black wow bam dropping knowledge so you learn new that. stuff. I, I it's love that. A, that's a fun fact. It's fun. It is. It is a fun fact. Mark Gant, I can't thank you enough for your time, my friend. Thank you. Thank we'll you do so it much, again man. soon. Appreciate you're, it. You're Please wonderful. do. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. A huge thanks to Mark Gant for his time today. Uh, if you guys would like to find him, all the ways to do so are down below in the show notes there. Uh, thank you guys for listening. We really do appreciate it. It wouldn't happen without you, so thank you. Uh, any feedback that you want to give to the show here, it is going to be, we are found on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, if you want to email the show directly, it's going to be at expandingrealitypodcast at gmail.com. Thanks again so much for your time, and y'all be good to each other. Thank you.